An organization is sending some much needed medical supplies to Ukraine, anything from pain relievers to IV fluids to insulin syringes. Thomas Teig is the president and CEO of Direct Relief, and he is joining us live tonight. Thank you for giving us some time. Responding to humanitarian crises across the world is what you do. You know it well. How does this compare to other disasters you and your team have faced? Well, I think all disasters tend to be rapid onset, but um, the big difference between a natural disaster is that, you know, um, typically there are blockages to distribution channels, but the difference is that everyone is trying to clear them in a natural disaster. And here you have one side trying to prevent them from being open. So I think the, um, the similarities are that displaced people uh, tend to find themselves in crisis rather rapidly if they have a chronic illness. Um, even though they're managing their diabetes or hypertension or asthma well. Um, so when you think of millions of people whose lives are disrupted fleeing for the borders, that in and of itself is a, um, a, a high risk environment, combined with the fact that there's active bombing and targeting of hospitals that we hear about, it's extremely dangerous. Um, it's such a contrast to the past two years when we've all been kind of pulling together, trying to keep each other safe, protected, socially distant from COVID. It's just a jarring, turn of events and just an unfolding tragedy for millions of people. Yeah, I mean, just confounding all, all of the, the challenges at once. Your group, I know, focuses on supplying medical aid. What are some of the greatest needs on that front right now? Well, it shifted, you know, early in the week, we have been having ongoing support to, um, to Ukraine for things like COVID or specialized medications that uh, were just needed but the, the people couldn't afford so that's something we've been doing for six or seven years uh we started after the invasion with concern about the maintaining the chronic um medications that people need that rapidly shifted four or five days ago to now mass trauma mass casualty uh wound care for the battlefield injuries that have really pushed even COVID patients out of the hospitals um so the deeply injured people can be taken care of so it's shifting rapidly the information is still a little bit spotty as communications were shut down over the weekend to kiev but i think so far the channels uh, that we've been using have remained open and we're trying to be responsive as fast as we can including with medical inventories in europe that we have you mentioned covid thomas a crisis of this magnitude can lead to a wider range of health problems in the long term what are some of your greatest concerns um, in in terms of the issues that these people may face if this goes on for a while well, you had, you know, the COVID spike very recently. You had relatively low vaccination rates. You have some um, multi-drug resistance TB in the area. So there's infectious disease issues uh, in Ukraine that uh, the worst place you can uh, protect against that is shoving people into the photos you're looking at now, people in crowded conditions, in refugee scenarios. That's just inherently risky, particularly for infectious diseases. As I mentioned, the, the chronic illnesses that if, if unmanaged can become acute crises, our other issues and you know directly focuses on things like providing charitable insulin there's about 230,000 people who have type 2 diabetes in ukraine about 15,000 children and young adults with type 1 so those types of issues that against the scale of what's going on don't seem huge but they're they're deeply critical for those who are affected particularly for type 1 diabetes so we're working with the ukrainian diabetes federation the society of critical care medicine, which has about 800 members who are intensivists in Ukraine and the surrounding areas, and really trying to see what specific medications are needed, in addition to the broad-based kind of uh, typical chronic care medications, and obviously the increasing number of first aid, wound care, and trauma type of, um, of items that are needed as this war goes on. It's just so complicated and so many things that we have access to here that we take for granted. Uh, before I let you go, Thomas, the events of the last couple of weeks, I know, are taking a toll on the people who are there to help. How are they holding up your teams? Well, I, everything pales in comparison to, you know, anything we're doing in the States here pales in comparison to what's obviously unfolding. So I think the team at Direct Relief is you know, deeply committed, uh, happy to help in any way we can. And it's heartbreaking to watch you know, what's unfolding. So it's good to be able to focus and do something and respond to specific requests with people who are clearly um, in need, in crisis, but deeply thankful and really appreciate the attention being given in ways big and small to the plight they're going through. That, that seems weird, but it does count for a lot and seems to be what 
keeps people know, uh, going when they know a lot of people are out there pulling for them. So that's important too. Mm. Definitely doing your part in these children that we're seeing and these families bearing the brunt of this humanitarian crisis. Uh, Thomas, thank you to you and, and all your crews out there who are working hard to keep people safe and, and healthy in this crisis. Thank you, my pleasure to be here. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.